Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. In this video, I'll show you why lighting contrast ratio is so important to cinematography and how high key and low key styles are defined specifically in filmmaking. The lighting contrast ratio is the difference in stops between one part of the image and another. A face can have a lit side and a shadow side. The difference between the lit side and the shadow side in stops of light is the contrast ratio. For example, you place a light meter on the lit side and it reads f5.6. Then you place a light meter on the shadow side and it reads f2.8. This means the lit side is two stops higher than the shadow side. I say the contrast ratio is two stops. So in many ways you're comparing two things, but the word ratio doesn't hold a lot of importance here. It's more of a difference between the two sides rather than a ratio. Photographers have a ratio system to measure contrast ratio, for example, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, etc. That system is not used in cinematography, and gaffers don't talk that language. So learning to communicate about lighting in stops is important. If the key and the shadow are the same exposure, then we call it flat lighting. If it's only half a stop above, the contrast ratio is half a stop. So remember, I'm using the word ratio because there's no other word for it. For really moody and dark scenes, the contrast ratio can be four stops or higher. Gordon Willis frequently used large contrast ratios in his lighting style. The typical average is about two stops, though it varies from scene to scene, depending on what the cinematographer is trying to achieve. The lighting contrast ratio on the face is only one half the story. The other contrast ratio is the difference between the lit side or key and the background. It is also measured in stops. The most common technique used from the earliest days of cinema is to have the background one stop darker than the subject. Now to understand high key and low key lighting, let's take some common scenarios. You could either have an overexposed foreground or background, an underexposed foreground or background, and a middle exposure. Let's just call it gray for now. I use the words black and white for the other two, but please remember it doesn't have to clip to white or black. I'm just doing it for simplicity. Gray actually means the range of about two stops over and under middle gray. So there's a gray area. Get it? Gray area. Don't pardon the pun. Why should puns be pardoned? With these three possibilities, you get a total of nine combinations. You have black, 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 gray, black, white, white, black, white, gray, white, white, gray, black, gray, gray, and gray, white. Say that back five times. Let's say you have gray, black. This is called low key lighting in cinematography. By the way, Low key and high key are understood differently in photography and cinematography for some strange reason. I use it the way I learned it from books and cinematographers interviewed in ASC magazines. Going forward, what if the subject is overexposed against a dark background? It's always low key lighting. Black on black is also low key. It's very easy to remember low key lighting. When the background is dark to the point of underexposure or actually underexposed or even black, it's called low-key lighting. Such lighting is used to create a somber or sad mood. I have a whole different video about low-key lighting you should check out. I'll link to it below. Now let's go in the opposite direction. When the subject is correctly exposed or overexposed against a bright background, we have high-key lighting. High-key lighting is used in many sitcoms and comedies because the world is always a cheerful place. It's easy to remember because the background will be brightly lit and cheerful. No unnecessary shadows to spoil the mood. Cartoons are a great example of high key work. If you have a white background or gray background, by which I mean about two stops above or below middle gray, but the foreground is underexposed or even black, it's called a silhouette. There's no ambiguity. All this is common knowledge on film sets. If we have a gray background with either a gray or a white foreground, it's just called normal lighting. This is what the majority of scenes look like. If everything is in the realm of gray, the background is one stop below on average, which is below the two stops we need for gray. Up to two stops is fine. More than that and the look gets moody and serious. You don't particularly refer to high key or low key in reference to contrast ratios on a face, though naturally they fall into the same rules when you light the set. The fill side or shadow side will generally match the background. It's rare to have a dark shadow side, but nowhere in the room is it that dark if there's no other light source. That will look unnatural. So there's no need to look at the face for high key or low key lighting. 
you look at the background. That tells you everything you need to know. This is specific to cinematography because in cinematography, you are lighting spaces and scenes most of the time. All the shots taken in that scene in space have to match. Getting the mood right is critical. To wrap it up, contrast ratio is the difference in stops between the key and the shadow. High key is when the background either matches the foreground in correct exposure or if the background is overexposed. Low key is when the background is underexposed or black, regardless of what the subject looks like. And finally, the silhouette is a special case where the background is correctly exposed or overexposed, but the foreground is underexposed or black. Everything else is normal lighting, by which I mean the kind that doesn't contribute a lot to manipulating the mood. That's it. There are no other variations possible. Sometimes you fall into a gray area, but that doesn't really matter because the cinematographer's eye and experience will tell them what the mood is like. After all, lighting is just one aspect of mood. Humans also use other cues like the actor's wardrobe and expression and the context of the scene, what's happened before, etc. The best example I can think of is The Shining. In the bathroom scene, it's lit to high key, but the mood is anything but. And for the reverse example, study Manhattan, where the lighting is mostly low key, but the subject is comedy. You can break the rules as much as you want. If you like this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell you'll see on the left. Okay, I lied, it's on the right. It's gray and against a white background. High key, definitely.